Hey, this is Pastor Ty, and we want to thank you for joining us at Cowboy Junction today. Uh, when you hear this message, we want you to know that we've been praying, and praying that your faith will grow and be encouraged and challenged, and we really want you to know that we, we love that you're here. But what would help us is if you would subscribe, rate this, review this, and, and share it online. You can also help us by partnering with us, and a lot of people call Cowboy Junction home that attend our online campus. But when you join us financially, you're really being a part of the team. You can easily give a one-time gift or set up a recurring gift at cowboyjunctionchurch.com backslash give, and uh, that'll help us so much. Uh, thanks again for being here, and hope you enjoy this message. Hey, Monday night. How are y'all tonight? Good. I'm so glad that you guys are here. I've been looking forward to you getting here tonight. I've been so excited. Just in case you don't know, my name's CG. I'm on staff here. I'm not the senior pastor. Thank the Lord. Uh, we have the greatest senior pastors, though, in the planet, uh, Pastor Ty and Heather. I never want to miss an opportunity to tell them how awesome they are, how grateful we are for them. Um, this week, actually, Pastor Ty is in Montana. He is leading and encouraging a group of pastors that he gets together with, and uh, I'm so, so glad that he has the opportunity to do that and that that's his heart to go and lead and do those kind of things. So I get the opportunity to speak tonight. If this is your first time at Cowboy Junction, make sure and come back. I hope you enjoy tonight, but seriously, like you don't want to miss getting to hear Pastor Ty speak, so make sure you come back. Um, but this has been a big weekend around here. First of all, I turned 35 on Saturday. I know, I don't look it, but thank you. You're sweet. May, but bigger than that, uh, Pastor Tori, our kids' church pastor, got married on Saturday. And so, uh, to Hayden Abel, who's part of our family and his family back there, we're so excited for them. And so, um, be praying for them. We're just believing that God's going to do incredible things in that marriage and um, just celebrating how cool it is what, that God brought them together. So, that's very cool. Um, before we dive into today, I just want to encourage you, if you didn't have an opportunity to listen to Pastor Ty's message last week on Stronger Love, please go back. Go to the website. Check it out. You're going to want to make sure and listen to it. Um, we need to know and understand the stronger love, that God is love, and what that looks like before anything else really makes sense. And I'm so grateful that he did that message the week before I got to talk about this because it set everything up so so good as far as knowing that God is love above, above all else and that you are loved by God. So please check that out before you do. But we've been in a series called Stronger Me. And we've been in it for several weeks. And before that, we were in a series called Stronger Faith. And the reason we moved from Stronger Faith to Stronger Me is because Stronger Me was to really talk about how do we walk out our faith? How do we live out our faith? Stronger Me isn't a self-help series. It's not how to, five steps to becoming a better me. It's how do we exercise our faith and put our faith into action and to be a stronger me in living out my faith. And so that's what this is all about. And I really pray that today, I pray you're encouraged, but more than anything, I pray that we all leave challenged a little bit that it's kind of like one of those a shot in the arm that you know like I can do this God's got a plan and a calling on my life he he has gifted every single one of us uh, every single one of us in this room with a calling and a purpose and when we leave here I hope we all leave challenged to go and be the people that God's called us to be and I know every time I get the opportunity to speak I, I know that God's like CG you need this message more than anybody else and he's he's right I know I do because I get to prep for it for several weeks, and then I get to speak it four times. So I get to know this stuff inside and out. Um, but I do hope that this would uh, challenge you tonight. So we're going to dive in real quick to James chapter 2, starting in verse 14. And um, I hope you came prepared to take notes, because I have a lot of scripture tonight. And I'm going to roll through it pretty quick. So this is James, the brother of Jesus, talking, and it says, What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith, I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God, you do well. But even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? 
Will y'all join me in prayer one more time? Father, we just thank you. We thank you for tonight. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to be here, and I pray that you would help all of us just to, to block out whatever might have happened today, whatever's on the agenda for tomorrow, and to focus on you, and I pray that you would speak to us tonight. Lord, I pray that you would speak through me, that you would help me to um, deliver the message that you've placed on my heart the way that you would have me deliver it, to just be, I want to be the vessel that you want to use. Anoint me. I pray for freshness, and um, God, we just thank you, and we love you. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. So as part of the Stronger Me series, tonight the title of my message is Stronger Ministry. Stronger Ministry. Ministry is faith in action. The Greek meaning for the word ministry is to serve. Ministry is telling people about Jesus. It's serving people. One thing that ministry is not, though, is me-ministry. Y'all get it? That's supposed to be funny. Thanks, Jeff, for laughing. It's actually Pastor Ty's joke. I'm going to blame it on him. But honestly, seriously, ministry isn't about me. And so many times I think we get mixed up. Ministry is about people. It's about others. It's about telling people about Jesus. But I feel so. sometimes ministry becomes about what kind of name can I build for myself or what kind of platform can I have or, or are people going to notice me? I want to make sure that I get noticed when I serve. And that's not what ministry is about. It's about other people. Ministry is also not earning something. Christianity is not performance-based. We're not trying to get, we don't give to get. We do ministry because of who lives on the inside of us, and we just want to give that away. When I said stronger ministry, I know what some of you thought. You thought, man, I came tonight. I don't don't have anything to do with ministry. Ministry doesn't apply to me. I'm not in ministry. But I'm going to disagree with you. Because if Jesus has changed you, if Jesus lives on the inside of you, then ministry lives on the inside of you. Ministry is in you. You may say, well, I'm not in full-time ministry. I'm not a pastor. I'm not on staff. I, don't, I didn't go to seminary. But because ministry is in you, I have some good news for you. You guys are all officially in full-time ministry. Congratulations. Like, that's a pretty big deal. It's so cool. All of us are in full-time ministry, whether you work for a church or not, because of who lives on the inside of us. Ephesians 2, chapter 2. Ephesians 2 verse 10 says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. I always love the masterpiece part because I like to be reminded that God created us to be a masterpiece, and that's so good. But we can't skip over the part that he created us to do the good things that he had planned for us to do. So we are in ministry. Ministry is in us. Clay and I had the opportunity Back in like February or March to go to Tennessee, he went to a Dave Ramsey uh, financial coaching training thing. But on the way, we had always heard about the ARC experience that where they had built a full a, a ark, Noah's Ark, the actual size based on the Bible, uh, what they, you know, all the, the numbers, what are they called? Dimensions. That's the word I was looking for in the Bible. And um, Clay had always heard of it, and he thought, I'm just going to check and see where it is, see if it's anywhere near where we're going in Tennessee. And it was. It was just a couple of hours from where we were going. So we took a little detour, and we went there first. And it was so cool to see this ark. You just walk up to I mean, it's just mind-blowing how big it is, the craftsmanship. It was beautiful. It was amazing. It was so cool. And they had three levels on the ark. And so you would kind of walk through the first one, and we got to see kind of what they thought, maybe how they kept the animals on the ark and how the water systems work. It was, it was super cool. But my favorite part of the ark by far was when we got to the top level, and they had an exhibit on the top level that really had nothing to do with the ark, but it was a piece of the Museum of the Bible. And this is the part where, like, they had security guards and they had things under glass with the humidifiers going. It was kind of a big deal. And so we walk in, and it told the story of how the Word of God got to us today, and it started talking about, like, Paul and how Paul wrote and what he did. And it would show pieces of, of books and pieces of, tra- I don't even know what, you couldn't read them because they're, one, in a different language, and they're old, and they're cracked, and all of these things. But it would start, and it told Paul's story, and then it told a different missionary story, and, and disciples, and missionary after missionary after missionary. And, and I just remember walking through, and I can't tell you the stories. I can't even tell you their names. I remember one of them being Hudson Taylor, because Hudson Bean's named after Hudson Taylor. And so I, I recognized that. But other than that, I didn't know the names. I didn't know. I just remember, though, being, like, completely and totally awestruck. Like, oh, my goodness. Like, this is a big deal. 
this is huge. And we walked out of the exhibit, and the first thing I saw was this round, curved wall. It was big, kind of curved, and it had this map of the world on it. It was super cool. I loved it, like, graphically. And really cool, but there was something that was kind of jacked up about it because it says, and the journey continues with dot, 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 but it was backwards. And I'm like, why in the world? This exhibit was beautiful. It was so cool. This wall is amazing. It looks awesome. Why in the world would they put the letters backwards? I'm a little OCD on top of it, so I'm, I'm kind of like ruined the whole experience for me, you know? And so I turn around to ask Clay, why did they put those words on backwards? And about the time I turn around, there was this round column that had a mirror all the way around it. And so when I turned to look, it showed the map of the world behind me. And now all of a sudden the letters are right. And I'm looking in the mirror and it says, and the journey continues with me as I'm looking at myself in the mirror. It was just the most humbling thing to think how big the responsibility is on each one of us to not let it stop with the missionaries. Praise God for the missionaries that went before us. Praise God for the Apostle Paul. But it doesn't stop there. It continues with us. So why is ministry so important? Well, first of all, Jesus demonstrated it. And if Jesus did it, I think it's something that we probably ought to pay attention to. In Luke chapter 2, It's the story of when Jesus was just a kid. He was little bitty, and his parents had left the city, and all of a sudden they realized, like, a few days later that they can't find Jesus. Where did Jesus go? If you've ever felt like a bad mom, you didn't lose the Son of God, so you're doing good, right? But they go back, and they find him, and where was he? In the temple. Being, being, He just wanted to teach. He wanted to learn. And this is what he said in Luke chapter 2, verse 49. And he said to them, Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business. Jesus, even as a child, knew that ministry was one of the most important things that he was supposed to be doing. He had to be about his father's business. Jesus also demonstrated ministry by the way he served. He served everywhere he went. One of the greatest stories of him serving is when he served his disciples by washing their feet. It was such an amazing example of serving. And in Matthew chapter 9, it says, um, verse 35, Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered like sheep, having no shepherd. Jesus demonstrated ministry and serving everywhere he went. Everywhere he went. There's also some things that Jesus said that make ministry important. And just like the demonstrating, if it's something Jesus said... It's probably something we need to pay attention to. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15, he said, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The Great Commission, you probably heard it. I remember growing up, and every time I usually heard this scripture, it was probably a missionary that was encouraging us to go somewhere, to go into all the world, like all the world was overseas. Did y'all know that Lee County is part of all the world? Like, how cool is that? Lee County, New Mexico is part of all the world. We have a mission field right here. If you're called to go into those other parts of the world, praise God for that too. But don't forget that we've got a job to do right here as well. And then Matthew 5, chapter 13 through 16, Jesus talked about how we're the salt of the earth and the light of the world. And we're not supposed to hide our light. We're supposed to shine. That's part of what he said that we're supposed to do. So ministry is important. Jesus demonstrated it. Jesus said it. There's people that don't know Jesus. There are lost people. Heaven and hell are real. Ministry is important. We need to tell people. That's why this Jesus sign means so much to this church. Because every single light bulb represents a heart of a life that's been turned on. All the ones that are on. The ones that aren't on are the people that we're believing for. That they're light. And it has nothing to do with who we are or what we've done. It's everything that Jesus has done when he turns the light on inside their heart. The names that we're believing for. That's why ministry is important. So if ministry is so important, what is it that keeps us from doing it? And see if y'all relate to some of these. Number one, it's uncomfortable. Just a little bit, right? Like it just stretches us. it's, It's not something that 
is super easy. It is uncomfortable to share your faith. It's uncomfortable to set the good example. It's uncomfortable to do those things. Or maybe part of being uncomfortable is that I don't know how. I don't know what to do. Or I don't know how many times I've heard and been guilty of saying it before. I can't do it like Pastor Ty. And I would say to you, good, because we only need one of him. That's all the world can handle. Right? God made each one of us unique on purpose. We're not supposed to do it like somebody else. But I know that sometimes that keeps us from doing it. Another reason is I'm not knowledgeable enough. I don't know the scriptures well enough. I don't, I don't know my Bible good enough. If I were to have to pray for somebody, I don't know how to pray good enough. Or my past. If you only knew, CG, what I had done, then there's no reason that I should ever be in ministry because people wouldn't believe me. People wouldn't know that, it, that God truly has changed me. And that is this, the, big of lie, the biggest lie that the enemy can tell you. The Apostle Paul, if you know that story, God even changed his name. He had a, a huge past. God changes his name, and he writes more than half of the New Testament. It doesn't matter what your past looks like. God can still use you in a mighty way. Maybe another reason is that we're busy. And let's be honest, we are. And a lot of us, most of us, all of us are busy doing some really good things. We're busy with our family. We're busy with friends. We're busy taking care of paying bills and our job. But so many times being busy can keep us from doing the ministry work that God's called us to do. Or maybe just fear, being afraid of all sorts of different things. My mom used to say that she was always afraid to say yes to God because she was afraid that he would send her to Ethiopia. And she wasn't even real sure where that was. But I think we probably have all find, our, find ourselves sometimes in a place of being afraid of if I say yes to God, if I step out and do something, what am I going to have to do? But here's what Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 1, starting in verse 6. This is Paul in prison talking to Timothy, who's doing some ministry work. And I feel like Timothy was probably at a place where he was saying, it's uncomfortable. I'm busy. There's so many things that have me afraid right now. And this is what Paul says. This is why I remind you to fan into, the, into flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. So never be ashamed to tell others about our Lord. And don't be ashamed of me either, even though I'm in prison for him. With the strength God gives you, be ready to suffer with me for the sake of the good news. For God saved us and called us to live a holy life. He did this not because we deserved it, but because that was his plan from before the beginning of time to show us his grace through Christ Jesus. So I think if Paul were with us today, he would say, okay, so you may be a little uncomfortable and we are busy and you may be afraid, but do it anyway. Do it anyway and do it with the strength that God gives you. It's not up to you to muster up the strength to do the ministry work. We are world changers. That's who God made us to be. I love Junction Christian Academy um, for a lot of reasons. Um, the Christian school that we have here, one of the things that they do is they're teaching these students. They have K-4, four-year-olds up through fifth grade, and that's it. And they get bugged all the time about trying to go to middle school, junior high, and high school. And if you were to ask Krill, she would tell you that this is what God has placed on her heart is to go through fifth grade because her desire is to give these students a foundation in the word of God, teaching them how to be the light, teaching them how to be the salt of the earth, and then sending them out into the world to do exactly what God's called them to do. And I love that so much about them. One of the cool things that they do is they teach them. They'll say, we are. And then they all repeat, world changers. If you need to get their attention, all you have to do is walk into a room and say, we are. And they all just scream back, world changers. It's so cool. In the classrooms, starting in K4, they, each classroom has a jar of marbles in it. And the, the marbles in the jar represent every day that a student's going to be at JCA. So the K4 jars, they're full of hundreds of marbles. And then the fifth grade jar, it's down to just a few left. And every day that they're at school, a teacher takes a marble out and talks to them and says, don't forget that God has a plan for your life. He created you to be a masterpiece. 
masterpiece. He's given you gifts and talents and abilities. Don't waste today because God made you to be a world changer. And they put that marble aside. When they graduate fifth grade, the last day of school, they take out their last marble and tell them, all right, go shine your light. Go be who God called you to be. And and I know that many of us would go, I wish I would have been able to go to JCA when I was a kid. But it's not too late. Just because you didn't go to JCA doesn't mean that you're not a world changer. God created every one of us to be a world changer. And if I had a jar full of marbles, I'd tell you today, you're a world changer. God's got a plan and a purpose on your life. So the how. How are we going to do it? We know it's important. We know what kind of tries to keep us from it. But how do we do it? Here's just some ideas on how I feel like we can put our faith in action. Ways that we can share our faith with others. And first, the first one is to say, come and see. And the story that I want to use is found in John chapter 1, verse 40. And it was when Jesus called some of the first disciples. And I love this story so much because, so first of all, Jesus is walking by these guys. And these guys recognize Jesus right off the bat because John the Baptist had told them who Jesus was. And so Andrew was one of the first ones. And he, he turned and he started following Jesus, which is first. We've got to follow Jesus first. But then after that, he follows Jesus. And then the first thing he does is he goes and he finds his brother. He didn't go to Walmart and find a stranger. He went home and found his brother. And ministry is something that starts at home. It starts in our marriages. It starts with our kids. It starts with the family and the friends that are closest to us. Who's in your circle? Who are the people around you? That's a great place for ministry to start. But then after Andrew went and found his brother Simon, he brought him to Jesus. Sometimes we have to be a bringer. We have to go and find somebody and then bring them to Jesus. And then the next day, same thing kind of, Jesus found Philip. Philip turns and starts following Jesus. And then after he follows Jesus, he turns and he goes and he finds Nathaniel. And he tells Nathaniel, we found the Messiah. We found Jesus. Come and follow Jesus with me. Nathaniel's a little bit more hesitant than Simon. And he says, who is this Jesus guy that you're talking about? And he said, he's Jesus from Nazareth. He's Joseph's son. And Nathaniel says, can anything good come from Nazareth? And I love that Philip didn't say, okay, well, let me tell you, he's really cool. He's got it all figured out. You should hear this guy talk. He didn't like go trying to defend Jesus, right? He just said, come and see. Come check it out for yourself. And sometimes I think that we can say that to people. Just come and see. And I'm not talking about just inviting them to church, although that is a great way to encourage somebody to come and see. But maybe just invite them into your story. Let me tell you what Jesus did in my life. Come and see. Come check it out for yourself. Number two, we can do the follow me as I follow Christ method. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 says, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. In the New International Version, it says, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Leading by example is so powerful and effective. Am I, am I right? Has the do as I say, not as I do method ever worked? It doesn't work. Leading by example is the most powerful way. And when we can, when we can invite people to come and say, okay, I'm going to do my darndest to follow Jesus, you come follow me as I follow Christ. I may not get it right all the time, but I'm going to try my hardest to follow him with all that I got. When I was growing up, I wanted to be like my dad so bad. Um, many of you know, but my dad is a world champion steer roper. I thought he was famous. I thought that he was like this. He is a big deal to me. But I mean, I just thought that like he was the coolest thing in the world. I wanted to walk like him. I wanted to talk like him. I wanted to look like him. I wanted to rope like him. And talking like him isn't necessarily the best thing. But I wanted to be just like my dad. I even went as far as practicing his walk. He's kind of got a little bit of a strut. The older he's gotten, it's more of a limp. But... He walks and he kind of drags a leg a little bit. And I would walk behind him and I would practice his walk. I'm not as good as as I used to be. But I would would kind of like, my leg would do the whole thing that his did and stuff. And the biggest compliment that anybody could pay me as a 12-year-old little girl is if I would be walking by, trying to be like my dad, and I would hear somebody say, is that guy Alan's daughter? And I would be like, yes, I am. Because I so badly wanted to be like him. 
How much cooler would it be if a group of Christ followers are following Jesus and we're doing our best to walk like him and talk like him and look like him and we walk by and they say, is that, there's something different about them. They must be a child of God. Maybe there's, I don't know, maybe I don't know what's different about them, but there's something, they shine, they talk, they, there's something different about them. We may have to change some things in our life to set the kind of example that we need to set. But it's a powerful way to minister to somebody when you can say, follow me as I follow Christ. Number three, find a need and fill it. Y'all knew we were going to do this one because this is something we talk about at Cowboy Junction a lot. Find a need and fill it. Matthew chapter 14 tells the story of when Jesus fed the multitude, thousands of people with five loaves and two fish. This crowd of people is following Jesus around. It's getting late. He's been teaching and preaching. And the disciples, I know that they were the first ones. They don't own up to it, but I know they were the ones that were getting hungry. Because they go to Jesus and they're like, hey, we should probably send these, the crowds away so they can go get them something to eat. We want something too. But maybe we could send them away so they can go get something to eat. But what I love about this story is they found a need. Even if it was their own, they also found a need for somebody else. But what, what did Jesus say to them? He says, you feed them. And so many times I think that we forget that part. Like we want somebody to do something about the need. But we forget that Jesus may give us the exact tools that we need to help fill the need. And he, he, they said, but how are we going to do that? We have five loaves and two fish. How are we going to feed? There's thousands of people. And that's what's so incredible about our God is that when we bring just a little bit that we have that we feel like doesn't measure up to anything, that doesn't amount to anything, and we found a need and we say, God, this is all I have. He's the one that helps us fill the need. He's the one that performs the miracle. It's not us that does it. It's he, it's God that is the one that performs the miracle. We just have to be willing to say, I'll fill it. I found a need and I'll fill it. One of the things Pastor Ty is famous for around here is if you find a need um, and you come and tell him like, hey, you, we, we, Pastor Ty, I think it would be so amazing if we ran a bus from Tatum to Hobbs on a Wednesday night to bring the teenagers. I think that would be so cool. He'll say, well, congratulations, you are now officially the bus pastor at Cowboy Junction Church. Because so many times we do expect somebody else to do it. Instead of saying, I see the need, I can get a CDL. And let me just tell you, you can. I did it, and if I can do it, I promise you, you can do it. God will give you what you need to do what he's called you to do. We just have to be willing. Number four. Whatever you do, Colossians 3, 16 through 17. Let the message about Christ and all its rich richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do, say whatever you do. Whatever you do. Good job. And say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. This one's one of those that's super easy to say, but that's a little bit harder to do. But that God teaches us that we can do ministry in whatever we do. And it's super important to live by that. That whatever we do, whatever you do at home, whatever you do at school, whatever you do at work, whatever you do at a rodeo, whatever you do at Walmart, whatever you do in the Walmart parking lot, Whatever you do in the Walmart line, whatever you do, we can do as a representative of our Lord Jesus Christ. So my question tonight would be, who was that person or maybe those people in your life that were willing to put their faith in action to say, come and see, follow me as I follow Christ. Watch how whatever I do and say, I do it as a representative of our Lord Jesus Christ. I know for me, I was thinking back and my parents gave, gave their life to Jesus when I was little. But who was the first person that they went and found after they followed Jesus? That'd be me, their own. And you can do the same. 
And then they brought me, my mom especially, every time the doors were open, she brought me to church. Even if I didn't want to go. Definitely when I had to wear a dress. Like, those were not good days. But let me just tell you, parents, if you have kiddos that maybe are in a place that bringing them to church can sometimes be a struggle. I, I will testify for me personally that I'm so grateful for a mom who brought me to church whether I wanted to go or not. When I was seven and a half years old, we went to a church in Lovington, and uh, my kids' church pastors were Raymond and Gina Anderson. Gina's here on Monday nights a whole lot. They were my kids' church pastors when I was little. And Raymond's a carpenter. He built the coolest puppet stage you've ever seen in your life. And every week they would do the lesson and do puppets. And I still remember the Sunday when I raised my hand and went up front to ask Jesus to come in my heart. I know that was seven and a half. I didn't fully understand the decision I was making. I didn't fully understand the gospel, the ins and outs of it. But to be real honest, I'm still learning. But I knew that I needed Jesus. And I knew that I wanted to live my life to, to know him and to learn more about him. And so I remember Gina taking us into a back room and praying with us. I'm so grateful for kids' church pastors who are willing to serve on a Sunday to tell me about Jesus. That's why kids' church is a big deal to me because it made a big deal, big difference in my life. I've had kids' church pastors. I've had youth pastors. I've had mentors, I've had friends who have demonstrated what it meant to come and see. Just come and see. And then this guy named Ty Bean shows up when I'm 13 years old to the sale barn in Lovington and eventually marries Heather. And they have constantly demonstrated for me, follow me as I follow Christ. Let me show you what, how I follow him. I'm so grateful. And the list goes on and on and on. Who was that person in your life? And aren't you grateful? You can be that for somebody else too. Ty encouraged us at the beginning of the year to really be thinking, and he said, this is going to challenge us, but who would be the next 100 people that you would invite to church? And I would go a step further. Who's the next 100 people that you want to tell about Jesus? That's a lot of people. But it's good to get uncomfortable. The role in ministry... The church's role in ministry is also very important because the Bible talks about how we are the body of Christ and that we have a role both inside these four walls and outside these four walls to be the body. In Romans chapter 12, verse 4, it says, Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. That makes so much sense to us, right? Like, we know how important every part of a body is. But how many times in church do we feel like our body part, my spiritual gift, won't really count or matter? And let me just tell you, every single part, God made to matter. No matter how old, no matter how young, no matter how, where, if you have training or don't have training, God's given every single one of us a gift. And we're supposed to bring it and then do the best that we can with it to use it well. Several years ago, I broke my leg. It was just one leg. I still had one good leg. I had both arms. I had the rest of my body. But I was non-weight bearing on crutches. And I remember the first time my mom had to go to work and leave me at home by myself. And I got up to go to the kitchen to get me something to eat. And I remember standing in front of the fridge thinking, how in the world am I going to get the food out of the fridge to the microwave, to then to the counter for me to sit down and eat. I don't have, I can't, and it's just a leg. I still had both my arms. Every part matters. Your part matters. So now what? You may say, I don't know where to start. There's no wrong place. Start somewhere. Put yourself in a position to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Be stretched. 
just get involved. Ministry is way more. Hear me on this. Ministry is way more than serving at Cowboy Junction Church. Did y'all hear me? Okay, good. But serving at Cowboy Junction Church is one of my passions. Like that's one of the jobs that I get to do at Cowboy Junction Church. And so if you're not involved at Cowboy Junction and you say, I want to use my gift, I want to get more involved, I want to get connected, then I want to help you do that. So there's a couple of things you can do. First of all, if you want to, you can stop by the hub before you leave. And Shauna or Shauna will help you fill something out on the iPad and get your information and I'll get in contact with you. Or right where you're sitting right now, you can pull out your phone. And it's okay to do this in church. You can pull out your phone and you can text the number 97000 and just put all one word, all lowercase, CJ Next Steps. It's that simple. And hit send. And as soon as that sends, you're going to get a form. If you'll fill that form out with your info and put that you're interested in serving on a team, I'm going to get in, I'm going to get in touch with you, and we're going to find a fit for you to get to serve at Cowboy Junction Church. I can't wait to see what God does in and through all of us being a part of the body and using the gifts that God's given us to serve. In closing, I want to do one more thing. This week, I was prepping and preparing for my message. And I kind of just got stuck. I knew what I was supposed to say, but I, I was at a place where I just needed a little bit of encouragement. And um, so I emailed all of the volunteers at Cowboy Junction. And um, I just said, I want to know, how has God used serving and volunteering and ministry to impact your life? And the stories just started rolling in. My inbox was full. And I wish I had time to read every story and every, everything they said, but I have a few that I want to read tonight that I hope encourage your heart how important serving and ministry is. Beverly said, the warm welcome when we started coming to Cowboy Junction is what kept us coming back to CJC. And now I love getting to be a part of it on the First Impressions team. The same thing that kept her coming back is the same place that she serves. Sean, this is one of my favorites. He said, I serve as the water boy during Camp Crossfire. It's not the most glamorous of a job, but one of the most important jobs. Knowing that being humble and doing the best you can do allows those who are out front to do their jobs well. How cool is that? John said, no matter how bad my day is gone or how messed up my world may seem, just showing up and helping God's people always makes me smile and feel better. It seems like the more I help and serve, the more I want to help and serve. Dale and Edna said, we are most blessed in the nursery as the babies come and we can bring them peace as their parents' lives are changed in the service. We love to see when a baby comes back and we can see the peace of Jesus on them as they change week by week. They said they start off coming in crying and the next week they cry a little bit but not as much and the next week a little less. And love to see the transition as they get to watch them every week. Connie said one of the joys of serving for her was the feeling of being included in something bigger than ourselves. And Roxanne said, when I was new to Cowboy Junction, I remember how much the greeter team impacted my life and made me feel so welcomed. It also made me feel like I was part of a family. Serving now, I have a greater understanding of how we serve Christ. When we serve others, we can make an impact on people's lives. I love serving because just like at one point, just getting to church and having so many people love, loving people embrace me with so much love and happiness, open up my heart to receive. I pray and hope it does the same for others. Isn't that cool? I said earlier that we don't do ministry to get, but I will tell you that when you pour out, God fills you back up. And sometimes we have to pour out in order to make room for him to put stuff in. I want to close tonight. And I do hope that if you're here and you would like to get involved, that you would like to serve in at Cowboy Junction, I would love to help you do that. One way or the other, I hope that all of us walk out the, the ministry that God's placed on the inside of us. How cool will it be if everybody starts walking around looking like our father acting like our father and people just start recognizing it all over the place that's going to make a difference that's going to change the world around us but 
like I told you earlier, my parents got saved um, when I was little bitty, and that was the first step. Ministry is awesome, but first comes following Jesus. And so if you're here and you would say, you know, tonight, I've never had that opportunity to choose Jesus first. Um, my parents were at a cowboy church service in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and both of them raised their hand. They like bowed their head, closed their eyes, both raised their hand without the other one knowing it. And the greatest decision that they ever made, and it affected me. That is the first step. So tonight, if you're here and you would say, CG, I want to make that decision tonight to follow Jesus. Jeff and I are going to be right over there at the next steps table here in just a second. We would love to pray with you. We would love to talk to you. Or maybe you're here and you say, I need a fresh start. I need to start over. Then we would love to pray with you and talk to you about what that means. Our prayer team will also be up here. If you just need somebody to believe with you, pray with you, then we would love to do that tonight as well. But would you guys stand to your feet with me? Let's just practice something real quick. There's some of you that are going to get it right off the bat, but we'll see. If I say these words, then you're supposed to repeat something. Are you ready? We are. Y'all did good. You did really good. Very good. We are world changers, not because of who we are, but because of who lives on the inside of us. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for every single person in this room. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the greatest gift in the world. And I pray that you would help us to do our part to tell people. Help us to do our part to put our faith in action. Even when it's uncomfortable, even when we're busy, even when we're afraid, help us to step out and be the people that you've called us to be. Help us to find needs and fill it. Show us what it means to say, come and see. Follow me as I follow Christ. In whatever I do, I want to be a representative of my Lord Jesus Christ. Use us, God. We want to give you all the honor and all the glory and all the praise. We love you. Thank you for tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Everybody said amen. As you guys exit tonight, you can leave the chairs. We'll get them later. But I want you to know that Pastor Ty, Heather, and I all love you. Jesus loves you. Don't ever forget it. It's time for us to go love God, love people with no limits. You guys have a great week. We'll see you next week.